So in this video, I'm gonna show how I paint the mech guns in my army. So the idea with these is to paint them quickly. Um, obviously, there's a huge amount of detail on these sculpts. They're amazing. So I want these to be battle ready, but to a good standard. And here's the process that I settled on. So I started with a black base coat and then a Zenithal Wraithman highlight. Then I'm going to use my airbrush. Uh, this doesn't, you don't have to use an airbrush here, but I'm just putting some Alatoc blue in the airbrush, pop in some thinner and some flow improver. You want it to be the consistency of milk. I mean, you hear this all the time. Everything's always the consistency of milk. You can always add more thinner if you need it to be thinner and you can always add more paint if you need it to be thicker. Then I just picked out all the plates that I need to be blue. I have not got the skill with the airbrush, so the idea is to just cover most of it in blue and then pick out some of the areas that are going to be metal or going to be a different color in, in black. Then I went over with a watered down Alatoc blue by hand just to get in all the bits that I failed to do with the uh, with the airbrush. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's orcs and it's, uh, it's pretty rough. I then picked out all the areas that aren't going to be blue in black. This uh, primarily is so that when I'm applying silver or metallics, uh, it goes onto black really easily. And you can end up dry brushing it or, uh, or, or just putting it on normally. Now I'm using a bit of sponge, this is just a bit of normal sponge, um, dipped in black just to work around the edges of the blue, just to give a kind of chipped paint effect. So again, this black is, is primarily to help the silver that I'm going to apply later uh, stand out more. Um, and yeah, that's it, I just work around really roughly on all the areas. Then I start picking out the, uh, the metal bits with lead belcher combination of using a dry brush technique and just slapping the paint on again it could be kind of rough because it's orcs it doesn't really matter if, if there's overspill and the beauty of painting is that you can always touch up if you make a mistake um, so yeah the idea is to cover all the all the bits that are going to be metal in the lead belcher um, bring out some of the details and as you can see it, it goes on the black a lot easier than it would go on to uh, a blue or uh, any other color and then i'm using a dry brush around the edges uh, to pick out some of those black chipped areas that I made with the sponge. And yeah, again, same, any metal bits, using a dry brush, combination of dry brush and a normal brush, just to uh, apply the paint. Then I'm using the sponge to apply some chips with the, uh, with the lead belcher. And this gives a nice kind of rough edge uh, to all the blue metal areas, and any kind of holes or divots. Uh, that there might be battle damage. You don't have to be as, as careful as this. I mean, you can see that I'm going to be making mistakes. It's very easy to touch up areas that you overspill with the uh, with the LA Talk Blue again. Um, I just wanted a bit more chipping here, so I've just uh, the sponge is fantastic for doing the chipped effect. Then I'm using Brassy Brass on the main barrel of the gun. Uh, it's nice to have a bit of variation of colours um, on orc weapons. They're kind of pieced together from scrap bits of metal. So it's nice to add a variety of, of metallic colours. And that's it. Let's just slap that on pretty liberally. To make sure it's over everything. Again, any of these little plates. Nice to pick out some of them in, in different metallic colours. Then I'm going to use a dead white on the, uh, on the teeth. The dead white's a nice almost a pure white and uh, you, you don't have to be insanely insanely careful here again it's it's a chipped rough or it's been painted by grot so it's, it could be pretty rough but you want to get a good coverage so that you've got a good base to work the uh, the weathering into again picking out i'm basically picking out any of the teeth with the white i'm also using a bit of white in the back of these little dials then I'm going to use a terracotta. Um, I love the contrast between the, the, the terracotta red and the Alatoc blue. Uh, so that I'm using the terracotta to pick out all the cables, particularly the, kind of the, the larger cables. I think the, sm the smaller cables I'm going to do with, uh, with different colors, but it's nice to get a, a good uh, solid co color that contrasts with the, uh, the, the rest of the model. Also, the battery packs and some other elements are going to be in this uh, terracotta. Then I'm using bloody red, uh, which is just any old, any, any red really, to pick out some of the cables along with the Avalanche Sunset from uh, Citadel. It's a lovely yellow, kind of warm yellow. Um, using that to pick out the cables and he's, you see I'm touching up areas that have overspilt uh, with the Alatoc blue. Um, with the wet palette, you've obviously got, it, it means I can have all these colors 
out and I can keep going back to them. And you'll see throughout the process, I keep going back a lot. Goblin green to pick out some of the, uh, the green cables. You don't have to be that careful because you can always touch up the areas with the, the other colors. So if you do overspill, you just touch it up. Here, here I'm touching up some of the silver with the LA Top Blue. Again, I'm just working my way through all the cables, picking out reds, picking out yellows and greens, just to give a bit of variety to the, the unit. So you can see I've put a little red on the dial there with the with the white backgrounds, and that just gives a bit of like it's a like it's a, a, a dial of some kind. Here I'm just trying to show a technique that I use to to brace my model. Good to have a very firm grip on it, and then uh, so I'm bracing it in my in my lap and applying the, the, the paint very carefully to the buttons. Uh, here's an example of me making a mistake and easily touching it up with the lead belcher. You can kind of do this as you go, so it's really not a problem if you if you don't find that you've got the, the steadiest hand or you don't feel that confident. If you're thinning your paints and you're not going too crazy, you can always touch up areas with that overspill. Adding a bit of black to the area. I'm just matching what uh, Games Workshop do with their guns. So, kind of these black rings and this other metallic color which I'm using lead belcher again again just to bring some variation to the uh, to the model so I painted the screen green I think down the line I might add something to the screen but I just haven't really got the confidence to do it at this stage um, and yeah that's kind of the base coats done then we want to use the my good old black brown wash you don't have to use such a dark wash as this I just like the kind of grimy grim dark look so I'm slapping this on pretty thick um, making sure it's not pooling too much, but it, I, again, I don't really mind if it does pool. It looks kind of like oil and grease and grime, so it, so it works fine. So yeah, slap it all over the model, let that dry. And um, while that's drying, I am start working on the gunner crew. So I base coated them black, then I used wild flesh with the airbrush to pick out the green skin, and then I did a kind of zenithal highlight with uh, camouflage green from above and yeah that's I did that to all the crew at the same time I did the Gretchen so I'm using terracotta for the trousers it's a nice contrast again and any cabling just make sure you water down your paints and then you don't have to be too too crazy um, black for all the metal areas again this just helps the silver or the, the metallic colors stand out a lot better it's much more forgiving if you've undercoated them in black and then I'm doing bone white for their tops, the base coat of their tops, and all the, the, the straps and, and wrapping and, and any areas that they might have on them. I noticed that there's a strap on the gun that I missed, so I jumped back to that, just touched that up with bone white. And then I'm using a LA top blue, which is the desk girls color that I'm using to, to pick out some of the details. Uh, I will learn sunset to pick out the lightning bolts on the battery packs and the lead belcher uh, on all the metallic areas. Uh, you don't have to use lead belcher. Any any kind of gun metal will uh, will work will work great for orcs. Even if these aren't going to be silver, uh, it's worth pick, I think worth picking out the metal areas in silver first. Then I'm using parasite brown just to pick out any kind of straps braces. For the lenses of the binoculars, I'm using a little blue with a little black as the base coat. And you'll see how I work into that a bit later on. Baltan green all over the skin. Don't let it pull too much. Um, you can kind of just guide it guide it round all the all the areas but let it let it sink into the details and the crevices and then I'm using a watered down camouflage green as a kind of glaze um, on the raised muscles and areas on the model as, a, as a, for my highlights and uh, it goes on pretty bright and then as it dries it does tone down quite a bit and you get a nice subtle blend of colors and you can be quite rough here, you don't have to be too careful. Again, if you make a mistake, um, it's very easy to go over it with, uh, with the base colour, if needs be. So yeah, as you can see, it's uh, toned down quite a bit as it dries. Uh, bone white, I'm using for the, the nails and teeth of the, of the models. Um, so I'm going in picking that out now because I would have lost that when I did all the green skin phases. It's a lot easier to do this after doing the skin um, so that you don't have to worry about doing it multiple times. Brassy brass just to pick out some of the metal areas and then these all get a good coat of my black brown dip wash to tie the miniatures together and, and get everything kind of grimy and uh, grubby. I'm not going as heavy as I did with the guns for these guys. It's just to, uh, just to bring them out. 
for the glass lenses of the binoculars. So I, I go back to using the original Alatoc Blue and I apply this just to the bottom halves of the lenses. Then I'm using Alatoc Blue and a little bit of bone white uh, to make it gradually lighter. Do it by eye and each time I'm just working at the bottom edge of the lenses getting smaller and smaller with each application of the paint so it's kind of getting lighter as it goes to the edge. And by watering down the paint it makes it more transparent so it gives a nicer blend. And once that's all dried, I'm giving a, a little dot of bone white at the top to act as a kind of lens flare almost, um, where the light's passing through, brightening up one side, and uh, it's being picked out on the top. Uh, and that's that's it. It's not too crazy. And they don't look amazing, but they're it's pretty quick to do. For the lips, I'm using the squid pink again, watering it down with um, quite a lot of water, as you can see. Uh, so it's so it's almost like a glaze, um, which I then apply a bit too heavily here, as you can see. Uh, but it's very easy to fix a mistake because it's so watered down. It's very easy to suck that up with uh, the capillary action of the brush, uh, and then have another go. So yeah, very carefully put uh, just just over the edge of the lip, and then the watered down aspect of the paint sh should give quite a forgiving blend of the uh, of the, of the colours. It's quite a bright color, but by watering it down, you've made it quite translucent. Just take your time here. Again, if you make mistakes, it's very easy to correct with the camouflage green. Um, so I lay top blue over the uh, some of the highlights of the, of the blue areas just to bring them out a bit more because the wash toned it all down a bit. Um, and yeah, just to, because obviously the blue is the Death Scars blue, it's nice to have the blue stand out a bit. And then I'm using the orange rust from Green Stuff World pigment, liquid pigment, um, on some of the metal areas. This just is just to add a bit of grime. You can go pretty rough with it when you're putting it on, and it dries a lot more subtle, sinks into the into the gaps. It's a really lovely paint, actually. I'm getting the most out of it with these orcs. For the ear tips and nose, I'm using terracotta and bone white, just a little bit. So I'm, I'm lighting it up a bit before I just use terracotta, but I'm adding a bit of bone white just to, to make it a little bit paler and making sure it's nice and watered down here. And yeah, this is the same principle as the lips, really. You just get it on the areas that you want to have this kind of pink blood at the surface look. So any areas like ear tips, noses, knuckles and elbows, because grots get thrown around a lot and as it dries it, it's much more subtle. Uh, again you can be quite rough here, it doesn't have to be too crazy. If you go add too much because it's so watered down you can use the capillary action of a brush to, uh, to pull it away. Uh, just use the brush to control where the, the pigment's settling almost. You're kind of tapping it on, you kind of pull the glaze around with your brush. Uh, again it's worth practicing this but it makes quite a subtle Subtle look, it could be better, but these are, I'm put, churning them out really quickly, so the idea is that uh, it gives a nice variation to the skin tone, and it's a nice little touch, I think. You don't have to do terracotta, you could obviously just use a lighter green. So yeah, that's it with the Gunner Crew. I'm happy with how they look. There's a good amount of detail, and it didn't take too long to complete them. Now to do more weathering on the Met Gun. Starting with the orange rust on all of the kind of exposed metal areas. I'm being very rough here. You don't have to be... It's up to you how much decay and rust you add to these orc things. You don't even have to have any, uh, but I, I like to add a lot of rust and wear and, and grime to these orc vehicles particularly. I just think that they, they go really well. So yeah, I'm slapping it all over, being quite rough with it. So it's, it's a bit of a technique of just kind of dabbing it around um, and in thicker areas you can, you can build it up uh, and where you want it to be thinner you can always just pull it away with the capillary action of the uh, brush again. Then I'm using typhus corrosion. I could have done this before adding the rust um, and then you've got the added texture that it creates where the rust could stick to, the, kind of the orange rust. I'm not going too crazy with the typhus corrosion. If this was a, a Nurgle miniature or or undead thing I'd probably be using a lot more typhus corrosion but um, with this I'm focusing on the gaps between the plates where pipes meet the plates so that it's it's just I'm just trying to imagine where water might run uh, where grease and grime might collect 
So on the on the front here, down the sides of, of the main gun. So I'm trying to keep the brush going from up down to make it look like it's it's how things run down the metal. That's pretty much that. And then I'm using the Nihilac Oxide, Nihilac Oxide, um, which is another Citadel technical paint, uh, just to give a bit of oxidized brassy blue. You get, I'm, I'm applying this carefully around the, the studs, quite liberally over these plates, um, just to run into these, into the holes. And you can wipe it away with a kitchen towel and this uh, means that it just sits in the kind of crevices. For the little things on top, uh, little energy energy points on top, I'm using electric blue uh, again and working my way up. I get, it's the same principle for the lenses that I was using which you just add gradually adding more bone white, working your way up to a point and then finally finishing with uh, a little dot of the, of the bone white and this just gives a bit of, a bit of a gradient to them. Uh, for the screen, I'm using Bartan Green Wash just to give it a bit of shine, and that's more or less it. That's and that's more or less done. I use a gloss varnish on the glass areas, and I'm using a matte varnish on the rest of it. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with how this uh, this turned out. I based them using the coffee and paint technique by Midwinter Minis. Um, and I added a bit of this to the front of the gun, as you can see at the, the front there, uh, and around the wheels and around the sides and, and, and areas where the grots might stand on the on the platform there. I then used my base colour, which is just a bronze flesh tone, to uh, to pick out the dirt and make it kind of look dusty. I also dry brushed a bit of this over the front and, and wheels and sides. It depends what you're using to base your miniatures. Uh, mine are all going to be on this desert, dirt, planet. So I'm using this grimy look. Um, I toned everything down with a little bit of a black wash after applying the uh, after it dried. And yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. They they look rusty and used. They look like they're being pieced together um, by the by the grots. Um, and uh, they did, really didn't take that long to do the three of them. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there's going to be more videos down the line. I've got a lot of orcs to work through, but this should be my Gretchen done and out of the way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.